Hello there. What is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Hulk expansion for Marvel Crisis Protocol. This big monster dude is everything a lot of people have been wanting, and I am super happy to have this. Also, happy launch weekend to all of you Marvel Crisis Protocol players out there. The game just officially came out, and uh, a lot of people are now finally getting their hands on it, which is super, super cool. So I'm very, very pleased about that. Also, do want to remind you guys about the giveaway. There's a $25 Amazon gift card giveaway going on. You can win one of those, which could be helpful to put towards one of these expansions because these things aren't super cheap. Uh, and that is one of the, uh, I guess, of the complaints about this game uh, is that it is it tends to be a little on the expensive side. But if you want to win that gift card, you just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. Those two things, it's, uh, it's as simple as that. I will uh, announce the winner uh, next week. Uh, so, or early this coming week, rather, um, depending on when you're actually watching this video. Uh, but yes, um, so yeah, that is, uh, that is all coming. We've got some cardboard here. We've got some cards. We've got our sprue here and we've got a little, little rules insert. We're going to take a look at all of this. We're going to start with the cards. Uh, then we'll look at the card, the unit card, the regular cards. Then we're going to look at the sprue and then we're going to put it together. So you guys can, in case you got any questions on how things go together, uh, hopefully this will be a helpful little guide for assembly. So we're going to do that as well. All right, let's get started. All right, you guys, now here is Hulk's unit card. I do want to point one thing out. Uh, this is the exact same on the front as it is on the back. So just to show you, I'm gonna flip it over. Uh, he does not have an injured side. Uh, and I am, and normally I would talk about this last because it's one of the last things here. Uh, but uh, yeah, basically if he uh, would be dazed, uh, he is eventually, he is just going to, uh, be KO'd instead. Now, with that out of the way, we can. It'll explain a lot of the other things here. First off, um, twenty health. Right, he's got twenty health. He is by far got more the most health of anybody in the game as of right now. Of course, granted, the game just came out, so that's not saying a whole lot. You've only got twelve heroes currently available, although more are coming next month. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, he is slow. He's got speed S, so slow. He is size four, so he's huge. He's a big, big, big dude. And not that many people are going to be able to push him around and move him around. That also means he's going to be tougher to be carried away by certain cards that come in the core set that lets you kind of drop off and deliver some, you know, some character that's size three or less. So, yeah, so he's not going to be able to, you know, Captain Marvel can't just pick him up and drop him in the battle that easily. He does cost six points so he is very very expensive so if you are fielding hulk you might want to grab yourself some cheap heroes like black widow or something like that to kind of round out your team so you're not stuck with only like three characters so we also have the uh, his defenses here uh only two against melee only two against energy and three against the uh mystical uh so that is going to be uh you know, he, he, he don't like you playing mind games with him. I, I, I'm surprised about that. Uh, I thought he would have had more melee defense because he's so tough. But I guess he's just because he's not armored. So he's just taking... I guess his health is really his defense against all of that. So that's that's something. Um, now, he, uh, he's he got strike. And that is uh, his, his basic attack. So uh, it's range 2. Like, is basically considered normal melee range. Uh, it's 6 dice. So it's a strong attack. It costs no energy. So that is good. Uh, and it's got the, um, of course, it doesn't give him uh, energy if he hits you. So he's got, but it does have push. So if you roll a wild, uh, you can push the target away uh, with short range. So you can push somebody away. You can just smash them and put them, push them away. That's normal. Okay. He has Thunderclap, uh, which is range 83. So it hits everywhere. It hits all the way into your neighbor's house. So, no, I'm kidding. That's that's B3. Uh, and that's bro that's beam. And what that means is you're going to lay the, 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 the range 3 or the, or the distance three uh, tool down, and everybody that it crosses over is gonna get hit by that, which means they can also hit allied people. If allied people get hit by a beam weapon, they just take one damage. It's not like the full attack, um, but you can hit multiple enemies. And that's gonna be really one of the, the signature things I think a lot of people are gonna try to do with Hulk is line up that beam weapon. There's not a lot of beam weapons in the core set. I think the only one that comes to mind is Iron Man. If he gets injured, uh, gains access to Unibeam, uh, and that one is also a beam weapon. But their be beam weapons are kind of rare because they can hit multiple targets, so it's like a way to attack multiple people. And you, 
Uh, I believe you do a separate attack roll against everybody that it can target. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and it is five dice. So if you can get like three three people in line, you can you know roll 15 dice on one attack. Although it does cost three power. Hulk Smash. And this one costs four power. This one's expensive. Range two, you got to be really close. Eight dice, folks. Eight dice. It's so many dice. I had to buy an extra dice pack because I wanted extra dice. Okay, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's just so many things that are... Also, there's car crisis cards and everything giving you extra dice. It's just... It, I, I definitely suggest getting an extra dice pack. Um, if you can, you know. So yeah, having a lot of dice is going to be awesome. Uh, so let's look at his superpowers. He's got some great superpowers here. First off, Gamma Leap, three power. Place this character within two of its current location. This superpower can be used only once per turn. Now, this is one thing about... Marvel Crisis Protocol. Within, in this game, is not the same as within in virtually every other game that I've played. In this game, within is like synonymous with how at is used in, in games like Legion or Armada. Or, you know, so basically within just means at least one molecule of his base has to be within that range so basically you know you can put him most of his base beyond uh when it says within you just have to have a little part of his base within too so that's cool so you get that gives him a decent amount of flexibility that's almost like he can move move distance that's like a like like a like a, another short move almost it's almost a free move action for him which is really nice um and that one can be used to help to one make up for his short speed for two, uh, to align him really well if he needs to do a thunderclap, which is also cool. And it also helps for certain abilities that re uh, prohibit movement. There are some thing, like we saw in Modox thing, there's uh, one of those, um, you know, cards that's going to say, well, you can only move, uh, you know, once per turn. And this is going to kind of get him around that, because now he can spend three power and just place himself somewhere else which is not a move action so that's kind of cool uh strongest one there is is another thing he's got it's only going to cost two choose an interactive terrain feature or enemy character both of size four or less and within range two and throw it medium the superpower can be used only once per turn so that means hulk can throw modok hulk can throw some of the larger buildings you know, size four is is pretty big. Uh, just for reference, the newsstand that comes in the corset, which is big, it's like as big as a uh, like a bus almost. That's only size three, so size four is gonna be real big, uh, like like the big 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 trucks. Like I think maybe like I think like the big garbage truck, which is kind of bigger than that, might be considered size four. But I think some of my smaller Naboo buildings will qualify as size four too, because I mean they're they're still kind of big. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty fun. So size four is awesome there. Um, and you're throwing it medium too. So you're throwing it farther than a lot of other things too. That's pretty good. Um, Inner Rage, this is, and he's got his passives now. During the power phase, this character gains an additional two. So while Hulk doesn't gain power for his strike, he's gaining an additional two, which means he's getting three power every turn, which is awesome. So Hulk actually really doesn't want to be stunned because... Um, he then that would really hurt him. So stun is actually really bad for Hulk. Uh, you won't like me when I'm angry. Mm, yeah, we've heard that before. Add one die to this character's attack rolls for every three damage it has. Again, that's why we got an extra dice pack. Hulk is probably reason. Hulk should just come with extra dice. Um, that would be funny. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah. Additionally, if this character would flip its stat card to the injured side, it is KO'd instead. We talked about uh, that already. That's kind of why they just get away with 20 health and immunity to poison. So he cannot be poisoned. Let's take a look at everything else that's going to come in the Hulk pack. All right, so here are the tokens he's going to come with. He's going to come with Avengers tokens because he is affiliate Avengers. He's got some damage. Uh, why does he only come with three damage tokens? What is up with that? Hulk is going to use all the damage tokens. Like I'm sorry, four damage tokens. I can count. Hi. I know how to count. But still, like, he's got 20 health. What? Why, why, why even give him damage tokens? Like, what? what is four? I don't get it. Maybe the idea is because he's also six uh, threat. He's, so he would suck up enough of your team that maybe. 
Uh, and then uh, five power tokens. And then we've got these gamma tokens here, which are kind of cool. Uh, and they're going to be gamma on both sides. And that's going to factor in to his crisis card here. So you're going to place three gamma shelters, targets of opportunity, uh, on the map. Uh, and uh, you're going to have one that's closest to your edge, one that's closest to your opponent's edge, and one right here in the middle. If you control this one, you're going to gain... One victory point. If you control this one, you gain two. And if you control that one, you gain three. And anybody who's not within range two of any of them is going to take a damage every turn. So there's gamma rays just pouring down. So that's pretty cool. I would think maybe Hulk himself would be immune to that one. But that might be one of those things where, you know, maybe that would be a little too broken. Because then, you know, it might not be fair. And sometimes theme has to be set aside in favor of game mechanics and balance and... Yeah, I could see that being a thing, but it still would be kind of funny. All right, so we've got also we got some cards. So let's take a look at the Gamma Launch. If Hulk is within two of another allied character that is not holding an asset or civilian token, he may spend three energy to play this card. Place the other allied character within five of its current position. So he is throwing somebody. Oh, man, I want that with crossbones. I want Hulk to throw crossbones. Yes. I love that one. Uh, they don't get to make an attack, though, but he's, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. You know, the other thing, too, is this doesn't actually, he, this doesn't care what their size is. Hulk could throw MODOK. That's cool. Um, all right. And then anger management. This one does require the Avengers. So this one is even more particular. If any non-Hulk Avenger character within three of an allied Hulk, um, or sorry, any non, yeah, within three of a non-allied Hulk may spend up to five energy to play this card. The allied Hulk suffers damage equal to the power spent and gains that much power. So if you want to... <laughs> So they're basically, they're damaging their own Hulk just to make him go crazy. I don't think I like this one. They have to spend five power They're putting damage on Hulk. I mean, I get why he wants some damage is so that he can get a, an interval of three. Um, but goodness gracious, why would you want to damage your own Hulk? He's only once. He, I, I maybe for the, like the last turn of the game, if you know he's not going to die, they're not going to be able to get them to the twenty health. Maybe that's why. I, I, this is one I gotta play with and see how useful it is. <laughs> and then we've got seeing red. Oh, if somebody, if Spider Man dies, Thor would be so angry. So, seeing red, when an allied character is dazed or KO'd by an enemy effect, another allied character within two of that character may spend three power to play this card. After the enemy effect is resolved, this character may make an attack against the enemy character. I caused it. So basically, he gets a vengeance. And I like this one. This one's a lot more versatile. This one can work in just about any list, which is really, really cool. It's also be really nice to play with Hulk also, even though it doesn't require Hulk. Because, like, like who's going to have your strongest attack? Like, which one is this going to give you your biggest bang for your buck? And, like, Hulk, especially if he's already wounded, might end up throwing, like, ten dice for, for one of those attacks. You know, and of course, if you got a higher energy attack, you can totally spend it. So that's pretty cool. So we got some good cards there. And now let's look at the sprue. All right. So we've got our base here. And that's about it. Um, we've got, oh, we've got our body sprue. It's got Hulk's hair and, and um, feet. He's got some big feet. And we got that angry face. That angry. Arr. But you know what? Hulk has perfect teeth. By the way, so Hulk's dentist, kudos. And uh, yeah, I mean, look at those. Look at that hand, man. That's like one of the biggest hands I've seen on a sprue. Very cool. So let's cut these out, and then we'll pull out that assembly diagram. And we'll start putting them together. All right. So I've cut my pieces out, and one of the things I do before I assemble is I try to line them up um, according to this guide. Uh, so like I have step one's stuff here at the top, then step two's, then step three, step four, step five, step six, seven, eight, nine, ten, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and hopefully that will help. So, and uh, we're going to be using some Tamiya extra thin cement today. And that should get us started. So step one is going to be the head. And I always dry fit first. Make sure I've got the right way. Okay. 
Now let's load this sucker up. The cement, and this is actually better stuff. This isn't a big deal if you get it on your hands. Not as big of a deal. Hold that in a little bit for a few seconds. Okay. Done. Set that down. Next step is the arms. This one's going to go into right there, like so. And now we get right into the holes there. Beautiful. Beautiful. This one had some, some rough pieces I had to try to scrape off, but we got it in. Okay. Next up is to put the hand with the open palm into there. And is it going to go that way or is it going to go this way? It's going to go that way. Okay. Put this on a little thicker than I used to because I used to have problems with it not sticking and I think I just wasn't using enough. So, okay, beautiful. Set that down. And this isn't going to be completely dry for a while. It's still like, and this is forgiving enough. If you make a mistake, you can pull it right apart and, and try again. But you still don't want to make mistakes and that's kind of why we do the dry fitting first. You want to avoid those mistakes because the, the this and the other plastic loose, they can mess with the finish of the model. And then you can, of course, make up for that a little bit with the painting and everything. But you don't really want to have to. You don't want to mess up, the, especially the, the smooth muscles and the, and the faces. And you know, like, how'd you like to get your nose all messed up, right? You, know, you, don't, you don't want that. All right. There we go. And... And then the next step is to put the fist in there. We'll make sure we get it. There we go. Oh, that one doesn't seem like it. Let me shave that little bit off of there a little bit. I don't think that that might be why it's not going in all the way. Hmm. Maybe get one of those. Uh, there we go. All right, that ought to do it. Now I would, I should have just dry fit it again, but and now, all right, let's, let's put it in there. There we go, it did it. Now it fits all the way. Perfect. Oh. See, like I said, I can still, I can still loosen it up a little bit, but it's starting to bond. You don't want to, you don't want to make too many mistakes if you don't have to, because this will become, it'll become one with the force. That fist will soon be Kit Fisto. Okay, and then the next is the, the chest in the back. They're gonna go together like peanut butter and tuna fish. All right. Let's, I wanna do the, this piece. This is where I'm gonna put all of that. Yep, oh, sorry for bumping. a lot of this on because I want to get all of those seams. And before it dries, because this is thin. All right, let's, let's do it. Nice and tight. Beautiful. Look at those abs. Hulk don't eat no carbs. Mm -mm. No, he don't. Only protein. All right. And next up. Oh, well, actually, the next step is to put the arms and the head into the bust. As uh, according to step seven. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put the head in there. Go. 
gosh, he is awesome. What a great sculpt, man. This is a great, great sculpt. This guy is just phenomenal. Which way? I didn't dry fit. There we go. There we go. Like that. Okay. All right, let's get this one. I think I want to do this one on this. Do it on the arm instead. I think it makes more sense to put the glue on the arm because it's got the flatter surfaces. It's easier to see where the points where it's going to connect. You want those contact points to have it. You don't want it to leak out all over the exterior. All right. Nice, nice. A little. I think. I think. I think a, a hint of it is leaking out, but not that much. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it'll be that noticeable. All right, we got the top half done. Now we're gonna move on to step eight which is these two pieces of leg right here. And we're gonna, fit, they just they fit in, it makes perfect sense, okay? Nice and easy. All right. And we'll get the holes. I always do the holes first, because the holes are not going to dry out because there's not much, as much air exposed to them in there. The rest, like those flat surfaces, are going to dry out a lot quicker. And that's what you don't want. You don't want to put your glue on there and then wait too long and then it all dries. And then you don't get as good of a bond. All right. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, next up, I think it's these. This is the next part. The next part is like a three-parter. I think it's these two going in. I'm gonna dry fit these because it shows the foot already in this one when you when you fix, affix them. So this one's gonna kind of go in like that, and then oh, and then this. So this can go in after. Yeah, I don't have to do that part first. Okay, I hope. If I screw it up, you guys are all going to learn firsthand or secondhand or something like that. You're going to see me fail if I fail because that's how it goes. <laughs> so let me know in the comments below if you guys have been playing Marvel Crisis Protocol yet. I have not done a how to play video yet. I'm probably going to do that pretty soon. Just it's been busy lately. Holiday time coming up. A lot more stuff to talk about. A lot more really cool Star Wars things going on that have been taking up a lot of my time, which is a good problem to have. I'm not complaining. Oh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. All right. I'm going to go all over here. Hasn't been a whole lot of Avengers news lately. Disney Plus launched, and they've got all their new lineup of shows. But I want a little more on there. But I haven't heard much about like Wakanda, uh, or, or rather, not Wakanda, but uh, Wanda, Wanda Vision, and uh, and Winter Soldier, and uh, Captain America or Falcon, or I, I don't know what name he's gonna. I mean, he's Captain America, but you know, like I haven't heard much about that show either sam and bucky basically or the what ifs which those are going to be really cool too it'd be kind of cool if this game ended up doing 
like a series of like what ifs. I think that's that's that'd be a kind of a good like long term future option to keep in the in the back pocket if you want to do some what if stuff. All right, we've got our other foot there. And then we're gonna do the last two pieces. Oh, I had it upside down. This is why we dry fit. I'm gonna sand that little piece down a little bit before I put those on it. Not sand, but just scrape it a little bit. There we go. Don't wanna have a bad fit. And then there's so much cool stuff coming out for this game already announced. I think uh, Venom is coming out in December, and then the Black Panther and Killmonger and um, Shuri, and I think it's, was it Okoye? Yes, I, I can't wait for Okoye. She was my favorite character from Black Panther. Here, we're almost done. Now we're just putting all the pieces together. And this was so easy. This was so easy. No unnecessary levels of complexity. A lot of pieces, but they seem like they all made sense. There we go. We got it in, looks good. We're gonna adjoin these two like so, and then we can attach the top half. Put it on both sides this time. I'm not sure, they both have weird bits here. They both have some weird bits. I think this side is the side with more of the weird bits. All right. There we go. We've got it, and now we're ready to put the top on like that. Okay, so let's load it up. I had some problems with some of the core set characters that wanted to go like this because some of these blocks like didn't match up. And so I think it was because I wasn't shaving the, the pieces down all the way. Like you gotta, Make sure they're, they're closed up all the way, but yeah, that makes it real hard when it doesn't fit. So like on one of them, I just had to cut this whole piece off and then just glue, glue it together. There we go. There is our Hulk. Gotta hold them together, give them some time to dry. And then not manage not to drop him. That would be good. All right, you guys, I've got him on the base now, and he is large and in charge. I love it. I can't wait to get him on the field and smash some heads. I love to hear what you guys think about it. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you guys have been playing Crisis Protocol, what your dream team would be. I'd love to hear more about it. Don't forget to enter that giveaway, and uh, click the bell for alerts if you want to be notified when new content comes out. I also want to give a big thanks to my supporters on Patreon. If you want to support the channel, that is a great way to do it. Patrons get early access to battle reports. They get their own channel in Discord. And then there's other rewards as well. Like if you're looking for some type of specific advice or uh, some type of specific videos, uh, you can uh, you know gain some uh, early access for things like that as well. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.